or you are here for the very first time, we are glad that you are here to worship God with us and during this special jazz worship service. But before we continue with announcements, there's a little bit of unfinished business from the installation service. So uh, first of all, I just was handed, we made the front page of the Northwestern Press, believe it or not, it's, and, the, and the title, the title is COVID-19 doesn't dis deter new pastor installation. <laughs> so there's lots of, lots of pictures and I can't wait to read it. I'm so excited to read that. But 
The search committee and the congregation gave me a beautiful gift of a new stole. And usually when you receive a new stole as a pastor, someone special puts the stole on for the first time. So because it's coming from the congregation and because my passion and my love is children, I would like to invite any children that are here to come forward and put the stole on me. So if you are here, come on up. <laughs> So now on to our announcements. Our last conversation church will be this Wednesday evening at 6.30. It is outside, so please bring a chair with you. That will be our last Wednesday evening worship service. There are lots of meetings and other activities starting with the fall, so please check your bulletin and your newsletter for all of those important dates. Faith formation for all ages, yes, that means there is an adult class in the works will begin on September 11th. Not sure if the adult class will begin that same day, but it is in the works. So watch your bulletin for more information. And we will be accepting new confirmands, sixth graders that are ready to be confirmed. There will be a meeting on September 18th at 9 a.m. So spread the news about our new program that's starting. And next week we will be doing a blessing of the backpacks and devices. So if you are a student or a teacher, or if you want to bring your phone or your computer or your laptop to be blessed for work, please bring those items with you next week. And I have a busy day today. I will be representing the Penn Northeast Conference and the ELCA at Pride this afternoon. So if you don't have anything else to do, go, go on out to the JCC. It should be a great afternoon. Some people news that I have, uh, Terry went to be with God on Wednesday. His services will be private, so please keep his family in your prayers. And Dale is back at Fellowship Manor. He is out of the hospital and back, so please keep him in your prayers. But that's all that I have. Do any of you have an announcement you would like to share? Good morning. Uh, just a brief announcement, um, our porch fellowship, we have one or two more, two more coming up in the next two weeks. So, uh, but we don't have any bakers and we don't have any uh, uh, hosts. So if you find it in your hearts to just uh, sponsor a, a bake good or host, help host that after worship, we'd really appreciate it. The sign up sheets will be outside at the porch fellowship uh, after the service. Thank you. All right, if there are no other announcements, let us continue our time of worship by listening to our prelude.
No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Whether you are young or old, you are welcome here. Whether you are male or female, you are welcome here. Let's get up and let us greet one another with Christian love, whether it be passing of the peace or waving and just saying good morning. Get on up and greet one another. Oh, I've been meaning to call to see how he was doing. How are you doing? Please come back to where you were, but remain standing if you are able. May the spirit move you during this time of worship. May you connect with our God in new and exciting ways. And may you be transformed. Amen. Our opening hymn is, I want Jesus to walk with me.
start worship. <laughs> Join me in our call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Assemble before God, our rock and refuge. Come together to listen for the voice of our creator. The word of God shakes the foundation of the earth. We expect to be changed by God's message to us. This is God's holy day, a time to lay aside narrow interests. How will we honor God in word and deed? We will delight in the word and works of our God. We will join together in praise and good works. Please be seated. It's now it's time for us to share the things that we're not so proud of, our sins, our regrets, our wrongdoings with our God, first in silence. And now joining our voices together, we bow in awe before you, powerful God. We have forgotten that you are in charge of the earth. We have neglected the siblings you have called us to love. We want them to conform to our way of doing things rather than reaching out to them where they are. We would rather ignore them than feel obligated to help. Sometimes we would rather continue our own crippled existence than call on you for help. Oh God, we need your mercy. Amen. Our God is a God of wholeness, of restoration, of new life. And through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are indeed made whole, made new, and loved. Amen. Our first reading is responsive from Psalm 71, verses 1 through 6. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never to put, be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. My praise is continually of you. The gospel reading is from Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox and his donkey from the man manger and lead it to water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things being done by him. Will all the children come up for our children's chat?
How you doing? Good. Are you having a good week so far? Yeah. I, I have a question about weeks. Can you tell me all the days of the week? Do you know all the days of the week? So, so what is, what's one of the days of the week? Which, which day do you like to start on? Some people like to start with Sunday and some people like to end with Sunday. Should we start with Monday maybe? Let's call Monday the first day of the week. What comes after Monday? Tuesday, and then what comes after Tuesday? Wednesday, and then Thursday, and then Friday, and then Saturday, and then Sunday, right? So on those days of the week, there are different things that we do, right? So you do the same thing every single day of the week, or is your, are your days different? Yeah? So what's something that you do on a Monday? Like pretend you're in school already, okay? Like what would you do on a Monday if you were in school? Uh, do, math, do, do math and do art, that's good, okay. What else might you do on a Monday if school is back in session? What would you do when you got home? Maybe some homework? Might have some homework to do. Do you have activities on a Monday night that you do? No, Monday, okay, Monday's clear. Sometimes, okay. All right, what about Tuesday? What would Tuesday be like? You'd be back at school, right? Yeah, you'd be back at school and maybe you'd have a different subject, right? Maybe gym. Maybe gym, yeah, or English class maybe? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and then what would you do when you got home? Eat dinner. And then you do some art, yeah. Maybe homework again, right? Okay, any Tuesday night activities? Do you have anything? You have soccer on Tuesday nights? Okay, so we know on Tuesday nights we do soccer. All right, then I'm gonna jump ahead. What about Saturday? What is your Saturday like? You go snowboarding in the winter. That's cool, that's a fun thing to do. What else do you do on a Saturday? Hmm? Sleep in? Oh, I like to sleep in. <laughs> what else do you do on a Saturday? Do you maybe take a walk or go to a park and play? Yeah, maybe some sports, maybe some games. If you're a dancer, maybe some dance events, right? Okay, so Saturday is kind of like, you know, a fun day where you get to do things that you don't usually do during the week. And what about Sunday? What do you do on a Sunday? <coughs> Today's Sunday. What do you do on a Sunday? No, it's Sunday. <laughs> Where do you usually go in the morning on a Sunday? Where are we now? Church. We're at church, right? And is Sunday supposed to be a day where we come and we worship God together, right? And, and today we have a special Sunday because we get to listen to some really good music, right? Yeah. So what day of the week should we help other people? What day of the week are we supposed to help other people? Sunday. Sunday? All of them. I like that answer. God asks us to help people every single day not just on a Sunday, not just on a Monday, but every single day. And on a Sunday, we consider that to be what's called Sabbath. Can you say that word? Sabbath. That means a day of rest. But just because we're supposed to rest and be refreshed, does that mean we're supposed to not help other people if they need help? Yeah, we're supposed to help them even if it's Sabbath day, right? And that's what our scripture reading was about today, was about Jesus helping someone on the Sabbath day and Jesus teaching us that when somebody needs help, we should help them even if it's on the Sabbath day. Okay, so let's pray together. And will you repeat after me? Okay, dear God, thank you for teaching us to help others all the time. And all God's people say, Amen. Thank you for coming up. <laughs> Thank you.
pray with me. Gracious God, may we feel your presence among us. May we take the time to quiet ourselves, making room for your still speaking voice to be heard and to touch our lives, even through words such as these. And may we open up our hearts as we listen for you and be transformed. Amen. So this morning we are worshiping with some amazing jazz music by Patrick and the band. And we thank all of you for being here and for sharing your gifts with us this morning, your gift of music. I don't know about you, but when I listen to an awesome band like this, I just wanna stand up, raise my arms and dance. It just fills my soul. And I can't help but sway to the music and tap my toes. And I even wanna start clapping most of the time. Whenever I'm feeling worn down, 
Music helps me to feel better. When my spirit is tired, music puts me in a better place. It helps me to feel the energy of the spirit in this place and in my life. It comforts me and it gives me hope. It really truly lifts my spirit, it gives me hope and joy. And what a better way to worship. And in the scripture reading before us today, Jesus is in worship. Jesus is at the synagogue and he is teaching and preaching. And I envision a huge crowd being there to listen and hang on every single word. I imagine a church full of all different people from all over the place, all there to worship and to learn and to grow and to feel closer to God. And during this worship service, a woman comes in perhaps late. We don't learn a lot about this woman. We don't have a lot of answers. We don't know what brought her to the synagogue that morning. We don't know if she went every single week to worship. We don't know why she was there. We don't know what she was looking for. We don't know how old she is. It was 18 years, but that doesn't really tell us how old she is. We don't know if she had a family, if she had children, a husband, and we don't know for sure what this ailment was that she had. Jesus called it an ailment, but was it a physical ailment or was it an ailment of spirit? Because we know our mind, our body, and our spirit is all connected. So was it a physical illness or was it her spirit that had brought her physical body low? We have more questions in this text than we have answers. We just hear that it is a woman who is bent over, that the spirit had crippled her for 18 years and she wasn't able to stand up straight. This woman who slips into the worship service, perhaps unnoticed, unnoticed by everyone except Jesus. Jesus sees her and her pain, and he calls her over to him, telling her that she is free from her ailment. And then he lays his hands on her, and immediately she straightens up, straightens up. I imagine her arms went up to the sky, I imagine that praise of God that she gave for this woman for 18 years was bent over, but now can stand up straight. And the first thing this woman does is praise God. This woman who didn't ask to be healed. This woman who we don't hear a word about her faith. And yet Jesus takes the time to heal her. How many of us have been like this bent over woman, holding on to things that weigh us down? Perhaps we are bent over with health concerns, depression or anxiety. Maybe we are weighed down with stress responsibilities that seem to pile up and that we just can't get ahead on. Perhaps we are bent over holding on to guilt or anger or fear. Maybe we are weighed down by the injustices of our world or by the way we see others being treated or by the way others treat us. Sometimes it might seem as if we carry the weight of the world on our shoulders. And that is an enormous weight that weighs us down. What would it be like if Jesus set us 
free. What would it be like if we allowed the light of Christ to lift our spirits, to heal our brokenness? And to me, what better day to be lifted up, to let go of our burdens and to praise God than on the Sabbath day. Yet the synagogue leader wasn't too happy about Jesus healing on the Sabbath, a day that no work was to take place. And sometimes he gets a bad rap for this. But yet he was trying to honor God. He was trying to be faithful. He was trying to do the right thing. Yet he was holding on to these laws, these ways of being that were a different understanding than what Jesus would have us know. And Jesus reminds him of what the Sabbath is truly meant to be. The Sabbath is a time to be healed, a time to be set free, a time to be restored, to rest, to renew and a time to honor God with all we say and do. And what better way to honor God than by showing love for others? Sabbath is about healing. It's about rest and restoration. When our spirits are meant to be lifted up, when the energy of the spirit is meant to transform us, it's a time to honor God and experience hope and joy. And so in our worship service this morning, we take time. We take time to be restored, time for us to let go of our burdens, those burdens that weigh us down every day, even if it's just for a moment. It's time for us to be able to stand up straight to allow Christ's love to fill us, to make us whole, to refresh us, and time for us to praise our God together. But before we continue praising our God, I'd like you to just close your eyes for a moment. Think about something that's weighing heavy on your heart, whether it be a burden or a feeling, a health concern, Feel that weight. Feel that weight and ask God to let it go. Ask God to take that weight from you. You might have to ask God over and over and over again, but allow yourself to feel a little lighter. Allow yourself to feel the love of God surround you. And if you're able, I invite you to stand up. Stand up. Stand up refreshed. Stand up renewed, restored. Stand up knowing that you are loved by God and God lets these burdens go. Count on God. Amen. Please be seated. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to the whole people of God. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You satisfy the needs of all creatures, protect the habitats of fish and birds, prepare ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster, that all creation may thrive. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make your ways known to all people, 
Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and inequality. Merciful God, you provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You call us to delight in the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Strengthen those who feel faint. Give courage to those who fear and bring wholeness to those in need, especially Tom, Leo, Deb, Ed, family of Terry, Dale, Carl, Michelle, Julianne, Gabe, Margie, Kylie, Mercedes, Mariano, Jen, Mel, Kelly, Michelle, Kensick family, and Fran. For those on the prayer chain, we keep in our prayers, and for those not mentioned in our hearts. We also pray for our weekly partner in ministry, St. John in Whitehall. Bless them as they continue serving Christ in the community and beyond. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us join our voices together, saying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and our heart. Now it's high when we normally would collect our offering, but there are offering plates at both entrances. If you haven't had an opportunity to give back some of what God has given to you first, please do so after the worship service. And if you're worshiping with us online, we now take Facebook donations, so please feel free to click that donation button if you feel supported by this ministry. And just so you know, I started a Facebook uh, donation for my birthday because Facebook allows you to do that. So I did a fundraiser and my goal was $200. And as of today, it's up to $320. So that's wonderful. So all contributing to God's ministry here at Heidelberg. And that's a wonderful thing.
Please rise for our closing hymn.